the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm um, Gulefna Dikano, retired Godfrey Wababa. I uh, worked in uh, Air Force for 30 years after training from flying school uh, as Roti, as an uh, engineer and airframe engineer. Then uh, I also left the Air Force and went and worked in the uh, United Nations as an air operations officer. And all that time I had the inspiration of doing God's work as a lay apostolate. So I'm the national representative in Uganda here of the uh, Universal Living Rosary Association of St. Philomena, uh, which was started by Blessed uh, Colin Marie Jericho. I also work in the Army Court Marshal, the Appeal Court. It made me to go and study law. So I've studied aviation and the law. Aviation, I also went abroad. I studied in uh, Russia, in Ukraine, in Italy, uh, well, all that, I saw that uh, my focus eventually will be serving God as a lay apostolate. So I'm not a priest, I'm not a brother, I'm not even an ex-seminarian, but uh, once we are baptized, we become priests, we become kings, we become Come prophet. So don't shy away from doing God's work when you are a lay person. Don't leave everything to the priest. Even in the Catholic Church, we are allowed to baptize a person a during emergency when a person is dying you, and there is water. You can baptize that person with the proper words. And you save the soul. So we are going to share the word of God about the ten virgins. It is a very popular parable where the five virgins were wise and five were foolish. Now, we should not all the time take the words literally, virgins, virgins, and then we don't grasp the meaning. Jesus is going to explain this parable as far as the kingdom of heaven is concerned. And who doesn't want to go to heaven? We are here on earth working for the kingdom of heaven. Otherwise, life would be useless. We would just be committing suicide, like Judas Cariot committed suicide, or in France before the Dominic preached there when Mother Mary gave him the, the rosary. They were believing that uh, God created the soul, and uh, Satan created the body. So when you kill this body, the soul goes to God. They were committing suicide. Brother and sister, it is better we learn such uh, good teachings from uh, our church and the elders. So this story of uh, the ten virgins, you know Jesus was so organized in his uh, teaching where it takes the relevant time, the appropriate time, and to whom he is addressing it. And the parable, as we know very well, it is a story, a narrative, but with a spiritual meaning, not this ordinary folk or uh, laws or tales from the uh, our great grandfathers. And no, this is a real teaching about the kingdom of heaven using the ordinary things which we see. But then the meaning is hidden. So that is why even the apostles could ask him, what did you mean by this parable? What is the meaning? The, you, we must ask the Holy Spirit. Even when we are uh, sharing like this, the Holy Spirit should open our hearts, our intellect, our conscience, and that's when we can benefit from this. Otherwise, people would prefer reading newspapers, CDs, Playboy magazines. Okay, so let us uh, get something from the parable of Jesus of the Ten Virgins, which we can get from the Gospel, uh, according to Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. 
after Jesus had left the temple on a Tuesday of Holy Week, three days before his crucifixion, he took his disciples to the Mount of Olives on their way to Bethany. Resting upon the Mount, that is Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, with Jerusalem in full view, he spoke to his disciples of the destruction of that city and of the end of the world. Among other things, he said that judgment day would come as suddenly and quickly as lightning, and in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man comes. His Christians, he added, should watch therefore in order that they might be ready at all times to meet him with joyful hearts. To show the great importance of watching, he told his disciples the parable of the ten virgins, and he had the apostle Matthew embody this parable in his gospel for the benefit of all members of his church, young and old. So as we continue with the parable, dear brother and sister, alertness is very important in our life. And the devil li likes uh, convincing people to postpone what is required to inherit the eternal kingdom. For example, the sacrament of matrimony. Very many people are postponing because of the budget of the wedding. There's a difference between the sacrament of the matrimony and the wedding. The wedding is just a function. Now, for you, you think of the wedding gown, you think of the, uh, the reception, the, the vehicles you are going to use, all that you find the budget is so big and you get scared. But here Jesus is going to tell us, are we prepared? Because even he said, nobody knows the hour. Even himself, he does not know the hour. When the end of the world will come. It is only his father. So this one means any time, even when I'm talking like this, the end can come. But how prepared are we? And yet he has given us all the instructions of the preparation, the sacraments. Sacraments, we must really get them so that we lead a good life, a charitable life, and then when the Son of Man comes, we are not taken off guard. We are not taken by, by surprise. That's why he brought this uh, parable. Five wise virgins, five foolish ones. And when you look at humanity, you will find that we are actually divided in two, two. There are those who are like the five foolish virgins. There are those who are trying very hard to be the, like the wise virgins. So now, the end will determine who benefits. Because when you look at, at the crucifixion, there were two robbers, but one became a good thief and he inherited the eternal kingdom. The other one became a bad thief and he brought it here in the middle. You look at the, the, the ten lepers. All of the ten lepers were healed by Jesus, but only one came back to thank Jesus for the healing. Is this what is happening in the, in the whole world? People come praying to God, asking for favors, gifts, and when they get, they forget to go and thank. So you find our, our society is divided, like when you see a battle having a positive terminal and the negative terminal. Look at the uh, publican and uh, the Pharisee in the temple. The Pharisee is praying while boasting, I pay tithe, 
I pray every day. I observe the commandments. I am charitable. I, all of that, the things he was mentioning were good. But he added that I'm not like any other people, especially that tax collector there. And the tax collector was a dreaded person, the worst sinner in Israel. But then you see, he, the tax collector could not even raise his head to heaven. He just banged his chest. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Luke 18, chapter, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 18, verse 13. And the Bible tells us that the tax collector went home right with God and not the Pharisee. So we can be going to church, but if we don't have humility, we find that we have missed the kingdom of heaven. So let's now listen carefully to this interesting parable of the ten virgins. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like, like, like and and to the ten virgins, the kingdom of heaven, the Christian church as it appears to men who cannot look into the heart, the visible church on earth, may be likened compared to the to ten virgins, maidens, shortly before a wedding feast, who, according to oriental fashion, were at the house of the bride, their friend, in the evening, waiting for the summons to go forth to meet the bridegroom and to escort him to the house of the bride. The bridegroom does not live in the same town as the bride, but comes from a distance in a consequence of which it cannot be known at what precise hour he will arrive. The visible church is the whole number of those who profess the Christian faith and are gathered about God's word, but among whom, besides the true Christians, they are also hypocrites. Hypocrites is somebody who does not fulfill what he, he says or what he, he hears. He can say, thou shall not do this, and he does it. That is a hypocrisy. And that's what Jesus really attacked the Pharisees. They load people with the laws which they themselves cannot fulfill. They shut the kingdom of heaven to others, including themselves. Let's watch out about hypocrisy. Most of us, in one way or uh, at some time, have been hypocrites. And we ask God really, to help us not remain in hypocrisy. So you read Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 26, and 47 to 48, two other parables of the Lord illustrating the same truth are recorded. Christ is the bridegroom. You see now how Jesus is making the parable. So the bridegroom who is coming for that wedding now the parable it is christ those who believe in him are his bride we are the bride so jesus is the bridegroom and the church is the bride that's why you find we are one or you can say jesus is the head and his mystical body is the church so you cannot separate the head from the, the the mystical body. No, you cannot separate Jesus from the church. So five of them of the virgins were wise. These virgins were truly wise. Wise in the sight of God. Wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. You read Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. The wise virgins represent sincerely believing Christians. It is one thing to be a Christian, then it is another thing to be a believing Christian. That's why they are equated to the 
the wise virgins. Then the five foolish ones, they took no oil with them. See? Are we prepared with what we are supposed to carry for the wedding? They didn't carry enough oil actually. They had brought lamps with them, but there was no oil in them. Not that they had forgotten to fill their lamps. It was a willful neglect on their part. So, in our life, we can miss heaven because of our willful neglect. You are even residing near the church. And you, it is a Sunday, the day of obligation. And you continue sleeping while the people are in the church praying. Isn't that real, really divine neglect, the neglect of duty? They expected that their lamps would be filled out of the common stock in the house. You see? We take things for assumption. Even some people have got some beliefs that as long as Jesus died for me on the cross for my sins, that is enough. Faith is enough. But in the Bible, the letter of St. James says faith without works is dead. So let us not take things for granted. Now they thought there was oil in the house where they were going for, to wait for the bridegroom. They were entirely unprepared to meet the bridegroom. The hypocrites in the visible church who are without faith. So now that is the equivalent of the oil. They had no oil. Now the, the, the Christians who are just attend, uh, attend a roll call in, in the church, they have no faith. That's why you find the people are busy with the telephones. When the mass is going on, their, their minds are very far. So there is no oil there. They do not consider it necessary to trust for salvation in the Savior of sinners, but rely on their supposedly good works, unblemished life, uprightness, deeds of charity, self righteousness. Let's watch that, that brother and sister self righteousness. Nobody, even Jesus himself, when somebody said that a good teacher, he said, Why do you call me good? It is only my father who is good. You know, he was humbling himself. But self righteousness is poison in our faith. So, and on their holding outward membership in a Christian church. Some, too, rely on the faith of others, of parents, husband, or wife, children, or some of friends. For reference, you can read Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. Then Romans chapter 3 verse 28 and uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 22. See also 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 and uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. Then Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 which talks about to live by his faith, not by that of another. Now this one is common in families. You find it is the father alone who goes to church. And other members of the family take it for granted that they can be saved by the faith of their father or their brother you find the, even in the, in, the, in the family where there is a priest, the priest is also struggling for his salvation. He can only conduct mass for you, but you are not going to, to heaven because your brother is a priest. 
This is what we are being cautioned about. Now, Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 to 41, Jesus also shows that outward association of a hypocrite with a believer will not avail him anything on judgment day. Bad company will bring you down and will make you fail to enter the kingdom of heaven on the judgment day. It is easier for the hypocrite to mislead you than you to convert him. Because when you, when the saying goes that the birds of the same feather flock together. If you walk with a drunkard, chances of becoming a drunkard are 100%. That's why St. John Paul II said, Tell me you are friends and I will tell you who you are. If a girl walks with the prostitutes, when he, she has gone to study in the university and uh, her uh, friends are doing prostitution, she will be recruited. If you walk with the homosexuals, with the gays, you will be inducted. Keep away from the hypocrites. Pray for them. Talk to them, and if they don't listen to you, do not walk with them. Bad company has brought down even holy people. The self-righteous, the despisers of God's word, and uh, the hypocrites are wholly unprepared to meet their God. You read this one in the book of Amos, chapter 4, verse 12. Jesus is their judge. The lamps, not the torches, which the ten virgins carried, were small covered saucers with a round hole in the middle into which the oil was poured. At one side, a spout protruded, and the wick came out through this. The saucer was fastened by a pointed end to a long wooden pole, on which it was borne aloft. According to Jewish authorities, it was the custom in the East to carry in a bridal procession about ten such lamps. Ten was the number required to be present at any office or ceremony, such as the benedictions accompanying the marriage ceremonies. The ten virgins brought presumably to the bridal house their own lamps. Sometimes, as also uh, the author admits, and the Jewish rabbi, Jachi says, as well as Dr. G. M. Maki, for 30 years, a missionary in Syria, the bridegroom accompanied by his groomsmen and friends, went to the bride's house and then conducted the bride with her attendant maidens and friends into his own or his parents' home. The wise Virgins took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They had a sufficient supply of oil in extra vessels. For such a, so a saucer would not contain oil enough to burn all the night. The genuine Christians who are truly wise not only profess the Christian faith, read and hear the word of God, but in all sincerity accept Jesus as their savior. Their hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Even St. Paul said that even if it is angels who come to preach to you the gospel, which, we are, which, which is not the one we are preaching, don't accept it. It is anathema. So if Jesus is the center of our faith. The Holy Spirit has kindled this faith in their hearts by the gospel. Sanctified them in the true faith and kept them there in. The bridegroom tarried. He came 
considerably later than expected. Uh -huh. Just Jesus will come in an unexpected uh, time. They all slumbered and slept, as all the duties of robbing the bride. She was clad in white robes, often richly embroidered, decked herself with jewels, covered herself with a veil, and had a garland placed on her head. And adorning the house had been attended to, and the night wore on. Both the wise and the foolish virgins were overcome with sleep. In the latter times of the world, even the, the true Christians are not watching and praying as they should, and evidence of weakness of faith. The hypocrites are wholly indifferent and carnally secure. That's why Jesus in the, in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he woke up the apostles, he told them, pray continuously that you don't fall into temptation. So at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, at midnight when the sleep was deepest, the cry that the bridegroom was coming was made all along the line of the procession. His comrades bore flaming torches of pitch pine or bunches of tow saturated with the pitch and fastened to long poles with shouts and loud cries of rejoicing. Owing to the stillness of the air and the slow pace of the illuminated procession, the cry might be heard half an hour before the arrival of the bridegroom. Jesus, our heavenly bridegroom, is sure to come and get his bride, all true believers, though he may seem to tarry. You find Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. No one, however, knows the day, much less the hour of his coming. You read Matthew, Mark, Chapter 13, verse 32, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. As a thief in the night, and his bad sudden coming will be heralded with a cry, to wit with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. That's the angel host. All those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. They hastily drew up the wicks in their lamps and lighted them. That midnight cry came to the wise virgins only unexpectedly, but to the foolish virgins also unpreparedly. The foolish said to the wise, give us some oil. As there was no oil in the vessels of the foolish virgins, the flames immediately went out. When the heavenly bridegroom suddenly appears in the clouds of heaven, the hypocrites will be confronted with the horrible fact that they are without the oil of faith. But the wise answered, Not so. If we were to comply with your request, neither your nor our lamps would burn long enough to meet the bridegroom half an hour's walk and escort him to the home of the bride. On judgment day, a son cannot borrow faith from his father, a daughter not from her mother. Faith is not the work of man, which he can give himself at will, but the work of the Holy Spirit. You read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. They went to buy those who foolish ones went to look for the oil. At this time of night, they found no shop or a booth open. You cannot postpone baptism up to the judgment day. There, nobody will be there to baptize you. When a classic trumpet calls, the day of grace will be ended. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Now is accepted time. Psalm 95, verse 7 to 8. Today, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, those of, the, those of the dead living who at that moment are without faith, and all those who did not die in the Lord, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, are irrevocably doomed. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage. The wise virgins met the bridegroom. Mary Lee joined the procession and together with him entered the house of his bride.
whereupon the festivities began. Those who truly believe in him, who is our heavenly bridegroom, will, because of their divinely wrought and divinely sustained faith, be ready at all times when he comes to judge the quick and the dead. And he will take them into the eternal home which he has prepared for them. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18 will preserve unto them that is the gospel of John chapter 12 verse 26 where there shall be pleasures forevermore. But the fate of the foolish virgins and the door was shut after the bridegroom and those who were with the procession had entered the house of his bride, he shut and barred the door after him, and such as came late were not admitted. There was nothing for them but the dark street, streets not illuminated in the Orient. Remember also this, only those who by the grace of God retain the oil of faith until the end will be saved. Not those who at one time believed, but later concerning faith made shipwreck. You read the first Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, and Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. The outer door was closed and barred in order to avoid the danger arising from violent men who might make eruption, rob, and carry off jewelry, and even the bride herself. Lord, Lord, open to us. They were crying. Standing in the dark street, they begged to be admitted. On the judgment day, the insincere professors of Christianity will be very anxious to enter paradise with the true believers. Verily, I say unto you, I don't know you. Such was and still is oriental custom. They had faith in that which alone would give them a claim to be admitted to the wedding festivities. They had not been in the bridal procession. Therefore, I know you not. One who has been in those eastern countries tells of just such an experience. He and others coming late, expostulated with the doorkeepers, but in vain. The door was shut, and in the outer darkness of the desert night, they were obliged to depart. But in disappointment. When our heavenly bridegroom comes on judgment day, those who were without saving faith in this life will plead in vain. Lord, Lord, open heaven for us. Jesus will answer, I know you not. You are not true members of my church. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone who says, Lord, the Lord will enter the kingdom of my father. Those are the hypocrites. So, Christ is a word of warning to the Christians. Watch. Brother and sister, he is telling her to watch, therefore. Never for one day, nay, even for an hour, there we lose sight of that great truth that Jesus will come to the judgment. Or of the fact that he will come unexpectedly. No man knows when he will come, neither the hour nor even the day. He may come at any moment. In order to be prepared, we must daily watch and pray, asking the Lord to keep us steadfast in faith. Brother and sister, we ended without him coming, but he can even come any time even after the, this lesson, even tomorrow. Now the problem is that God is not controlled by time or space. 1,000 days is one day in God's measurement. There is no time. So you cannot say, oh, since 2,000 years, when Jesus went, he has not come back. Just be prepared because he can come any time. And how prepared are we? Do not think we can share the sacrament that because my father was baptized, now the whole family will be saved. No. Everybody, they call it 
God's case, no appeal. We shall be judged on our deeds where Jesus said, I was hungry, you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me a glass of water. I was naked, you gave me a cloth to put on. I was homeless, you accommodated me. I was sick in the hospital, you visited me. I was in prison, you visited me. He said, hey, Lord, where did we see you? Oh, like that, he said, that little one, you did that, it was me. So enter the kingdom of heaven. Then on the left, he will tell, me, tell them, I was hungry, you never gave me anything. And the same things he has, he has told this one. Then they will they put up uh, an appeal, complaining that when did we see you and refuse? Yes, that one whom you did not give, it was me. So brother and sister, let's keep watch. Any time Jesus is coming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.